The final step Torque Flight 11 has just been completed, with the ship now moved and the rocket fully stacked. The moment to make history has finally arrived, so the question is, are you ready? At the same time, Blue Origin continues its own preparations for the crucial pre-launch test of its second flight, marking another exciting milestone in the ongoing race to space. Meanwhile, the FCC has just announced a significant measure aimed at advancing the aerospace industry and supporting its rapid development. Let's explore all of these exciting updates together on today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX is charging forward at full speed in the final stretch toward the long-awaited Flight 11. Only days after B-15 was transported to the launch pad on October 8th, the company has now moved the final component of the Starship system, S-38. According to the previously announced road closure schedule, a move from the production site to the launch pad was planned between 12 p.m. to 4 that same afternoon on October 11th. This timing clearly indicated that the move would be for S-38, and the activity surrounding it strongly confirmed that expectation. On the evening of October 10th, SpaceX team began preparing for the move in earnest. The lifting jig used to handle the simulated Starlink payload was brought to the entrance of Mega Bay 2, signaling that final preparations were underway. Shortly after, the system was raised into position and the payload simulation process began. This step is essential for verifying that the payload deployment systems are functioning properly before launch. Not long after that, the transport stand arrived at Mega Bay 2. Its presence indicated that SpaceX was in the final stages of pre-launch integration. While we only saw the payload installation publicly, the FTS was likely installed inside the closed bay before rollout. The appearance of the transport stand suggests that every internal system, including the FTS and the hot staging assembly, was already completed. With these final preparations finished, S-38 was declared ready for rollout. Right on schedule, during the designated afternoon window, the massive stainless steel spacecraft began its slow journey toward the pad. As it rolled through Starbase under escort, the spacecraft gleamed in the Texas sunlight, showcasing its intricate heat shield. Each tile represented the countless hours of testing and refinement that SpaceX has invested to ensure Starship's survival during atmospheric re-entry. Upon arrival, SpaceX teams immediately began positioning Ship 38 for integration. B-15 already secured and stabilized on the OLM stood waiting beneath the towering launch tower. The chopsticks, the massive mechanical arms designed to lift and eventually catch Starship if you didn't know already, were raised into position, rotated, and carefully lowered to receive the vehicle. Then came the moment everyone had been waiting for. S-38 was gently lifted high into the air, rotated into alignment, and lowered onto B-15, forming once again the world's largest and most powerful rocket. The full stack configuration stood tall against the South Texas sky, marking one of the final great sights of the V2 Starship generation. This moment carried more meaning than just another stack. It was also the final time we would see Starship assembled atop the six-legged orbital launch mount in its current form. Once Flight 11 concludes, Pad 1 will undergo major redesigns to prepare for the next generation of Starship known as V3. While the rocket may return to launch from this site in the future, it'll be a completely transformed pad built for a faster, more efficient, and more reusable system. With the rollout and stacking complete, SpaceX has officially declared that Starship is ready for its 11th integrated test flight. The launch window remains set for the afternoon of October 13th as confirmed by SpaceX's official updates, hazard warnings, and road closure notices around Starbase. Between now and then, engineers will monitor every component of the launch system, including the rocket itself, the orbital launch mount, the chopsticks, the fuel systems, and other ground infrastructure. Flight 11 represents a major milestone for SpaceX. It's not just another test. It's a bridge between generations. The goal is clear, demonstrate full system reliability before transitioning to the upgraded V3 hardware. Many of the objectives first introduced in Flight 10 will be repeated and refined. These include successful payload deployment, reigniting engines in space, and testing new landing configurations for the booster. Repeating these tasks successfully will prove that SpaceX has achieved operational mastery of the Starship system. Flight 11 marks a bold step forward for SpaceX. The Super Heavy booster will debut a new landing sequence shifting from a 24-3 to a 24-5-3 engine burn to add redundancy and smoother control during descent. 
This test also challenges the limits of reusability, with 24 of Booster 15's 33 engines reused from Flight 8. Proving this capability will move SpaceX closer to fully reusable operations. S-38 will test upgraded crunch wrap heat shield materials for better tile bonding and improved thermal protection. Its flight will end with a simulated return to Starbase landing, refining systems for future real landings. As for the final V-2 mission, Flight 11 closes one chapter and opens another. Engineers have spent weeks perfecting S-38 and B-15 to ensure the design's reliability before transitioning to the V-3 generation, now nearing completion. A successful mission could accelerate the debut of the first V-3 flight by year's end, propelling SpaceX toward its goal of making Starship the foundation of human expansion beyond Earth. The stage is set, anticipation is high, and the countdown is near. When Starship lifts off, it'll carry not just a rocket, but the dreams of a generation. If if you're ready for that liftoff, let me know in the comments by saying, here we go, and don't forget to like the video as well as subscribe to keep following SpaceX's progress into the future of space exploration. When we talk about SpaceX's Starship, we can't overlook Blue Origin's new Glenn, a rocket that's been long symbolized as the company's ambitions in heavy lift orbital missions and stands as a direct rival to SpaceX's rapidly evolving Starship program. In the previous update, we saw new Glenn Glenn's booster rolled out, complete with all seven BE-4 engines installed. At first glance, it appeared ready for transport to launch Complex 36 for pre-flight testing. Yet one critical step still remained, the integration of its second stage. Without this, New Glenn could not proceed to full-scale vehicle testing. On October 8th, Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp shared a photo of the booster being moved into the factory, captioned, Next up, GS-1 plus GS-2 stage, mate and integrated launch vehicle hotfire. Days later, he followed with a video showing engineers carefully aligning and preparing the booster and second stage for stacking inside Blue Origin's integration facility. Along with the video was a caption saying, With new Glenn's arrival at our integration facility, we're starting the first and second stage mates. Here is a quick view. This intricate process will take several days as every mechanical, structural, and electrical connection between the stages must be precisely secured. Once this is complete, the massive payload fairing will be attached, though it'll remain empty until after the hot fire campaign concludes. Notably, recent photos revealed the BE-4 engines without their protective covers, offering a rare look at the cluster. The engine bay features a robust barrier separating the engines from upper fuel systems, shielding them from heat and flames during ignition. This design allows only the nozzles to be visible, a reminder of the sheer scale and engineering complexity behind New Glenn's propulsion system. Blue Origin is now approaching a key milestone, the integrated hot fire test of the full New Glenn vehicle, expected in mid-October. This will determine whether the company can stay on track for its tentative launch window between November 9th and the 11th. Success could mark Blue Origin's entry into the orbital launch market, while any anomaly could lead to further setbacks for a program that has already already faced years of delay. The debut mission will carry NASA's Escapade spacecraft, which includes twin satellites that will study Mars's magnetosphere. With a NASA payload on board, reliability and precision are essential. The outcome of this test campaign will not only affect the mission, but also Nuklen's certification for future Space Force contracts, pivotal to Blue Origin's long-term goals. Another major challenge ahead is booster recovery. The company plans to land New Glenn on its drone ship, a feat it failed to accomplish on its first attempt. While early setbacks are expected, achieving a successful landing would validate the rocket's reusability and mark a significant step toward Blue Origin's vision of sustainable, cost-efficient spaceflight. The coming weeks will be decisive. Blue Origin must flawlessly execute stage integration, complete the hot fire test, and ready the rocket for launch. Each milestone will bring the company closer to realizing New Glenn's promise, a rocket that could finally rival SpaceX's Starship as one of the defining launch systems of our time. And now we turn to the US U.S. Federal Communications Commission, which has announced major efforts to boost America's rapidly expanding aerospace industry. The FCC, one of the most powerful agencies shaping space regulation, has launched a bold new initiative called Space Month. 
declared by FCC Chairman Brendan Carr, October 2025 is officially designated as Space Month, a nationwide campaign to make the U.S. the most innovation-friendly regulatory environment for the next generation of space companies. Carr stated, We are declaring October 2025 Space Month at the FCC. Big picture, our goal is to make sure that the U.S. is the friendliest regulatory environment in the world for innovators to start, to grow, and to accelerate their space operations. His remarks underscore the FCC's mission to modernize its framework, remove unnecessary barriers, and expedite approvals for companies working on satellite and launch systems. The FCC's role in spaceflight is often overlooked, but it remains indispensable. The agency manages all communications between space and Earth, granting licenses that allow satellites and spacecraft to transmit data. Without its authorization, no mission can function. Working in coordination with the FAA, which handles launch and reentry licensing, the FCC forms a critical part of America's commercial space framework while helping mitigate orbital debris and preserve safe operations in orbit. Through the Space Month initiative, the FCC is preparing to modernize its licensing framework. Instead of relying on slow, case-by-case -case reviews, the agency plans to implement a streamlined licensing assembly line. This system will fast-track applications, simplify requirements, and establish predictable review timelines, allowing companies to secure the approvals they need with greater efficiency and transparency. Additionally, the FCC is considering expanding access to sections of the radio spectrum, particularly within the upper microwave flexible use bands, which are becoming increasingly important for high-speed satellite communications and next-generation data networks. By opening these bands to more operators, the agency hopes to relieve congestion and foster innovation across the global space communications industry. Later this month, the FCC will vote on these reforms. Commissioner Carr emphasized, at the FCC, we have been doing our part through a Build America agenda that aims to boost our country's space economy. Now the FCC is going to add rocket fuel to those efforts. His words underscore the commission's commitment to fostering a stronger, faster, and more competitive U.S. space sector. These reforms arrive at a pivotal time for the aerospace industry. SpaceX continues to set records with its Falcon and Starship programs, while Blue Origin, Rocket Lab, and Relativity Space are all developing next-generation vehicles that could redefine competition in the coming decade. By simplifying regulatory hurdles, the FCC enables these companies to focus more on innovation and launch cadence rather than administrative obstacles. While the FCC governs communications, the FAA remains the primary authority for launch licensing and public safety. Many within the space industry hope that the FAA will soon follow the FCC's lead, adopting similar streamlining measures to create a unified, agile regulatory framework capable of keeping pace with rapid technological progress. Ultimately, Space Month represents more than just a symbolic gesture. It marks a turning point in how the U.S. government supports the space sector. By accelerating approval processes and modernizing its systems, the FCC is fueling a new era of exploration and progress. From Earth's orbit to the moon, Mars, and beyond, these reforms could become one of the quiet yet powerful forces driving humanity's next great leap toward the stars. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.